Parliament, should we shift the balance of taxation in London from income to wealth, for example, with a land value tax? Okay, do you want me to right, respond? I mean, um, hear this against the backdrop of what I just said about not wanting to preempt what we decide. So th this is an attempt to answer the question as far as I can. Um, at the moment, and so far, we've asked the uh, of officials working with us to draw up a list of existing taxes paid in the UK and to score them in terms of their uh, potential for devolution. So, for example, value-added tax, which is always in a list of this kind, very, very difficult to envisage devolving that, partly because there are European rules impeding that possibility, we are told, and, and all reviews of this kind are told that. So, um, I, so that's I, I, ha I have got a list of the things you're considering. Yeah. And there's some really good ideas here, but um, I'm also pleased to hear that your remit has changed. I, always, I thought that was quite a too narrow remit. I would have preferred you to say you want your remit to make London a fairer, more inclusive city, but... Well, you know, let, me, let, me, let, me just, let me just carry on, uh, if I may. I mean, so at the, we're starting off with the list of the extant taxes. Now, the idea of, for example, a land value tax, just to, uh, you, in your, as, as mentioned in your question, but it could apply to other taxes, is that whilst I'm sure we will have evidence, um, you know, please su submit evidence to say that a land value tax would be a better tax than, say, council tax, some people will argue that, I think the difficulty that that would present us, if I can go forward to the deliberation stage, is that in order to deliver that, we would have to reform the tax system. So there's just, you know, I want to draw a distinction between the trying to, debating the possibility of devolving existing taxes and creating a new tax or reforming the tax system and then introducing that in London, which would, I think, be a much, much, even, an even more complicated idea. So I'm not saying we'll rule that out. I'm just pointing to the difficulty of um, if we were, for example, to consider a land value tax, it's hard to imagine that not being done for the whole of England. It's difficult well, to do it just well, in London. Well, it could be done just here. I mean, the, the, the real benefits of a land value tax are, of course, that it taxes unearned wealth. It, it's also very um, efficient because it, it doesn't discourage people from doing anything. It actually encourages them to develop land properly, to use it to its maximum potential. It, it means there would be fewer um, desolate areas where developers are, are just waiting for the you know, prices to go up. And the third thing, of course, is it's, um, it's very difficult to avoid, simply because you can't take your land out of Britain and, and put it offshore. So actually, it, it is such a simple idea to put a levy on, on land at its undeveloped value, whatever is on top of it, and I see no problem at all with bringing it in only for London. I mean, the, the Institute for Fiscal Studies, um, their, their Murley's report, recommended that this uh, replaced, that the land value taxation replaced business rates, which of course, you know, many of us have a, mm. a real problem with. I, I can understand your caution, but I just think, why not think a little bit bigger and actually, you know, move London on instead of just looking at the same things again and again. Well, I mean, if I can go back to the, I mean, I, absolutely, I take the point about the Murley's report and the IFS's work, which did indeed make the points you make. And indeed, you know, over many years, I have been uh, personally lobbied on this subject by the former Deputy Chair of Transport for London, as many of you all know, has been a long-term advocate of this policy. Indeed. Um, and I... But I come back to the, the challenge, if I can put the challenge back slightly, that of course we could recommend, it would be in the theoretically possible to recommend um, a tax unique to London, but I think the treasure, you know, going back to what I said about trying to live within the, the realisation that both the Layfield Committee and the Lions Committee, Layfield Committee and the Lions Committee, made recommendations which frankly led absolutely nowhere, if I'm honest. You know, we have to understand the baleful history of trying to uh, increase local autonomy uh, in this country, that if we recommend 
as it were, breaking London away in terms of introducing a new tax in London, I suspect that that would make it even more difficult for us to envisage getting anything done. That's not to say that the arguments in principle you make are incorrect. I'm just talking in terms of the, the difficulty of saying London should have a separate tax that doesn't operate in the rest of England. Now, of course, it would be open to the Scottish government, I realise we're not talking about Scotland, to make such a reform because it passes its own laws. But in London, we have to rely on the UK Parliament to make the change. And I think that in, within the bounds of what is possible, which, as I say, on the basis of history, we have to understand is not a, very, a great deal hitherto, um, proposing a radical reform to one tax only to operate in London might present greater barriers to reform even than we'll face otherwise. I, I do see that. I just think there are arguments you can make to the government um, about land value taxation. For example, the, the land uplift on the Jubilee line was something like 10 billion, um, you know, and, and all those sort of house owners, landowners in the area benefited. But only the businesses paid. And it just doesn't seem fair somehow that, that all, you know, if you're looking for growth in London, that the businesses have to fund all these large transport infrastructure projects. Would you just put it on your list to consider? Well, we certainly won't I mean, put it as a double negative. We definitely won't not consider it. If you see, I mean, we'll, it'll definitely be something we look at, particularly after uh, this morning. Um, and if I can broaden, I mean, you make a, in, in the question as written a slightly broader issue too about the balance of taxation in London potentially being shifted from income to wealth. Mm -hmm. And again, that is National. a more complicated issue, again, because if one were to do that, if you just say we were to do it, were to recommend it, under the present arrangements, because there are more wealthy people in London, that would undoubtedly tax London more. But under the current arrangements, all the money would go out of London. So with all of this stuff, I think we have to keep in mind the, the, the challenge of can we introduce changes from which London benefits, which don't disbenefit the rest of the country, uh, but where any changes um, do offer London greater autonomy, which I think is the core of what we're trying to do. So on the income and work, it's a very interesting question, so I'm, I'm kind of saying if this is done, we have to be careful that we do things which actually produce more revenue for London and are not fully equalised to the rest of the UK. Thank, thank you for thank that. You. This has always been an impediment, by the way, I don't want to raise questions that somebody else may raise later, but, you know, extra bans for council tax under the present arrangements, um, which I realise are about to be reformed, any extra tax paid in London will be equalised away. And that is a problem for London because of the very high level of equalisation we have, which you know, is good in some ways, but has this odd, dis this odd consequence that uh, if you put taxes up in London, the money will go, I mean, some of it could come back, but most of it won't.